Hello everyone. Today I want to talk to you about a very important message that shows the seal of God. I had mentioned to you that we have been learning a lot about the different applications of the fulfillment of prophecy in connection to the heavens. And there is a lot that we have published on our website with the weekly sermons that we give. And one of the things that we have shared already, there is this sign that you see on the screen. As I have shared before, two comets are making the initials of the Lord in the heavens in a very special place. The Alpha and the Omega letters that Jesus identifies himself with. But there is a very special verse in the Bible that talks about how God says, or Jesus says, that he will write on his children, he's talking to the Church of Philadelphia, three things. And I want to read to you that verse. In Revelation 3, 12, it says, Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my God, the first thing, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. These three elements that are mentioned here are the representation of the Godhead, Father, Holy Spirit, and Son. Now, we have, as we have said previously, the Alpha and Omega signature that we see that is being drawn in the heavens is a representative of the names of the Father and the Son. And the article sealed in his name on our website, and I will put a link in the description, we explain how this Alpha and Omega is representative of two of the stars in the belt, um, the bell stars of Orion, the stars Alnitak and the stars Alnilam. They both start with the letter A as Alpha, and then Omega is representative of the letter uh, the letter Omega in, um, in Greek, and it's like the O for the constellation of Orion. So it's Alnitak of Orion and Alnilam of Orion, the two stars. One represents Jesus and the other one, the Father. So when Jesus says, I will write upon him my new name, according to what we see in the revelation of the sign, is the name Alnitak, like the star in Orion, that represents the wounded one, like Jesus was wounded for our transgressions. And in the constellation of Orion, Jesus is depicted with his wounds that he was inflicted at his crucifixion. The crucifixion is actually depicted here at uh, the Horologium constellation because we have seen how the pendulum uh, and this constellation lines are representative of the cross. But Orion represents his wounds. Like when he was, when he rose from the dead and his disciples could see still the wounds in his body because he keeps those wounds to show the price of our salvation. This sign of the Son of Man shows us a lot about Jesus. And we are publishing weekly sermons on our website that I want to invite you to watch. And there are two in specific that I would like to invite you to watch, the earthquake of Philadelphia and the waters of Smyrna. Because in those two videos, it is explained about this sign that I have on the screen here. Because as you see, there's three Greek letters shown here. It's the Alpha, the Omega, and the Mu letter. This letter is the representative of the letter M. The third star in the constellation of Orion and the belt starts is the star Mintaka. And that star is representative of the Holy Spirit. So as we have three parts of the 
promised that Jesus, that he would write his name uh, on his children, the Holy Spirit is also part. And that star that represents him in Taka starts with the letter M. And this is the mu of the initial of the Holy Spirit. Now, in the two sermons that I mentioned that we published on the website, we explain how the Lord has shown that at the end of the sign of the Son of Man, because in, in the Bible and in, um, in Matthew 24 says, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. So that sign finishes as we have shared before on May 28th. Here is the uh, mark, the point, and on this side is right here when comet E3 reaches the pendulum constellation, the line of the pendulum and the constellation uh, a second time. The first time it was on February 20th, now um, in the future on May 28th. And that will be the time when the sign has been completely formed. But after that, there's a period of 372 days that form the rest of the letter mu. And that's a special period of time that the Lord has shown where he has to anoint his children with his spirit to withstand a time, the time of trouble that is described in Daniel 12, the time of trouble such as never was. And we uh, have another video, another sermon, this one, The Visit of Vengeance, and that talks about that time and about the plans of the enemy. And these are things that I cannot really, like the videos that I uh, cannot put on YouTube because of uh, restrictions about what is the content. So we invite you to watch that so that you understand about the, this time, this 372 days, because on this side, Comet E3 makes another loop, as you see here, and it reaches the pendulum line again on June 4th, 2025. And this three times are representative of um, plans of the enemy because this is the six o'clock hour on the Horologium constellation. So it's reached uh, three times, one, two, three. So six, six, six. And in the sermon that I just mentioned, the visit of vengeance, we explain the meaning of that and who is associated with in a very, very precise way. So we invite you to watch these sermons that are very uh, filled with understanding about what the Lord is revealing and the sign. And the Lord wants us to be sealed with his spirit and to understand our role at this time because he needs earthly witnesses to do a work for him. You know, there are two churches in the Bible that have no rebuke, the Church of Philadelphia and the Church of Smyrna. And each of those churches plays a very important, important role at the end of time. And God is inviting all his children to gather and to understand the truth that he's bestowing. Now, I would like to also mention that there is another um, another important date, and that's actually today, because Comet K2, the comet that has been drawing the last part of the Omega, uh, initial of God in the constellation of Orion, reached the line that shows the star Bellatrix, the left uh, hand that's represented in Orion, the left hand of Jesus. Now, the star Bellatrix is an important star. When you look up the name Bellatrix in Wikipedia, you will find that it said female warrior. And who is the female warrior of God? It's his church. They must be ready to witness for him and also make herself ready, like it says in Revelation 19, because it says, and his wife hath made herself ready. So this is the time to be ready and that's what the Lord is doing with the sign that he is showing in the heavens. Because this is a sign not only showing the time, but he shares messages to prepare his children for, for this time. And also to be ready to meet the Lord when he comes. Because he needs the church that is purified 
and the sign shows us the plan of salvation and the commitment that Jesus made for us. There's another sermon, Faithful and True, that is really touching and that it shows why Jesus is called Faithful and True and the commitment that he made for us, for our salvation, for our deliverance from sin. Because salvation is not just going up with him to heaven in a rapture, but it's to be free from the curse of sin, even now. And that's what God is inviting us to uh, participate of. And one more thing I wanted to show you is on May 19th, Comet K2 reaches this line that represents the head of Orion as the star Mesa at the head of Orion. And this is a, an important time when the Lord is showing that his Children must be ready to do a work for him. And so this is this few days that are left from now, April 15th, around here, to May 19th. He wants everyone to learn the messages that he's sharing because we must be ready. We must have oil and our lamps and that sign that shows the oil and the lamps is this sign that the Holy Spirit wants to bestow to his children. And on May 20th, the day after this date right here, is the anniversary of the triumphal entry of Jesus in Jerusalem. And, and the dates following up to the time when Comet E3 reaches this line right here, May 28th, from May 20th around here to May 28th, is the Passion Week of Jesus. And we have a study, I will put a link in the description, where we talk about the date of the crucifixion of Jesus on May 25, 31 AD. And the heavens declare that this is, a, this is an important time. And it's high time to be awake and also to learn, you know, to the Bible talks about the midnight cry that was given and the virgins being ready to meet the Lord and giving the cry, the bridegroom cometh, but they needed to have oil in their lamps so they could be ready and enter into the wedding with him. So we invite you to come and to visit our website so that you can learn about this seal that is being shown in the heavens. And this is the signature of the Godhead. Just imagine that two comets forming this precisely three letters and an area in the heavens that has a lot of significance because in, in our sermons, we have been talking about the two witnesses for some time now. And those two witnesses are the two clocks of God, Orion and the Horologium. And what a coincidence, which is not, that God will put his signature right here in this area where these two clocks are. And they, they show so much about Jesus. I really want to, you know, like the woman at the well, when she met Jesus and she recognized who he was, and what he taught her, she was excitedly going out and not to keep it to herself, but she wanted to invite everyone to come and see the man that told her so many things that, that she was very touched by the Lord. And that's exactly what the Lord is doing with the sign. When you listen to the sermons and you recognize how they teach us about his love and about his faithfulness and about his desire to put his law in our hearts, you will be touched as well. And our prayer is that you will do like the woman of the world did and go out and tell others to come and see for themselves. So let's do that and invite many to make themselves ready for the Lord at this time.